Yo! In today's video, I'm gonna show you guys my favorite transitions. If you guys wanna support me, feel free to check out my pay hip, link in bio, and let's get right into the video. All right, so first, I'm gonna show you guys this offset wipe transition that I use in my edits sometimes. So first, what we're gonna do is we're gonna duplicate it, and we're just gonna put it in the middle in between both clips, and we're gonna add offset, and we're gonna click on the stopwatch for shift center two. All right, now we're gonna add motion tile, and we're gonna drag the motion tile on top of the offset, and we're gonna put the output width and height around 400 ish and now we're going to go to the beginning of the clip and keyframe shift center two and then we're going to go up two frames and we're going to go either left or right depending on which way you want to go but in this case i'm just going to go i'm just going to move it towards the left towards the negatives and i'm just going to go minus a thousand and now i'm going to go up two more keyframes and i'm just going to keep doing the same thing but make sure whenever you guys are doing this method you see this line right here for the next keyframe we're going to want to put it at a different position so we're going to want to put it the line like either over here or somewhere else don't have it in the same position if not it won't work all right so now i'm just going to go like minus this right here I think that's pretty good. And we're going to go up two more keyframes and we're going to do the same thing. Make sure the line is at a different position. Go up two more keyframes and just keep doing that. I'm going to go ahead and bump this up a lot so we can get that really nice effect. And I'm going to go up two more and I think that should be enough. All right, I think that should be enough. I'm going to go ahead and cut it and delete, and delete the rest. All right, now we should have something that looks like this. It doesn't look as good, but we'll, we'll spice it up. All right, now we're going to add s underscore random edits and if you guys do not have sapphire basically what this effect does it randomizes the clip like one frame or like however frames you want it to change so if you guys don't have this i'd recommend just picking different frames from the footage and cutting them and then pre-comping it if you guys need help with that i'll make a video about it but in this case i'm just going to use this method all right now we're going to add motion tile and we're just going to drag this up above everything above the offset and we're just going to increase the output width and height and click on mirror edges all right now we're going to add directional blur and we're going to go ahead and change the direction to 90 and the blur length to around 60 or 70. in this case i'm gonna go 70. all right now if you guys want that more dramatic effect we can turn up the blur length as much as you guys want so far i think it looks a little bland so to cover that up we're gonna add cc toner and I'm going to leave it as is. And now I'm just going to pre-comp it. And I'm going to right click it and go to time and go to enable time remapping. And then now I'm just going to drag the last keyframe towards the first keyframe a little bit so it can be more fast. And I'm going to drag my current time indicator above the last keyframe. And I'm going to cut it and delete the, the rest. If you guys want it to be longer or anything, we could mess around with the keyframes. So I went ahead and changed the frames of the random edits. And I just changed the seed so I can get a different look because I didn't like the other look. So now we should have something that looks like this. It's pretty cool quick it's fast it's a nice transition and very effective all right let's move on to the next effect i almost forgot to mention if you guys want to composite it better and make it blend in much better you guys can double click on the transition and we can go to cc toner and put the color like the main color of the clip in this case there's like a, a blue tint to it so i went ahead and changed it to like a blue so we can have this effect all right, so first we're going to add an adjustment layer and we're going to cut it and delete and then move one frame forward and then cut and delete the rest. So we can have this one frame and we're going to go ahead and duplicate it around like three to four times and we're going to move them like a staircase. Move them in between the middle and for the first adjustment layer, we're going to add invert and we're going to change the channel to lightness. The next one, we're going to add fill and I'm going to and I'm going to go ahead and change it to black and I'm going to press T and I'm going to move the opacity to around 70 ish. All right, now for the third adjustment layer, we're going to add invert again, and we're going to change the channel to HLS. All right, for the fourth adjustment layer, I'm going to add mosaic, and we're going to set the horizontal to about 100-ish and the vertical to the same amount. And we're going to add glitchify. But if you guys do not have glitchify, you guys can use anything else. Find edges or something and invert. For this case, I'm going to use glitchify because I like how it looks, and we should have something that looks like this. All right, so for this next effect, we're going to duplicate the first clip and we're going to add motion tile and we're going to set the output width to around 300 and the same with the height. Now we're going to add warp vortex and we're going to go to the beginning of the clip and click on the stopwatch and for the angle offset and the Z distance. All right, now I'm going to go up 15 frames and now we're going to set the vortex star to around minus 42 and don't forget to go to the beginning of the clip and set the vortex start to around zero all right now we're going to go back to the second keyframe 15 frames and set the z distance to around 
0.080. All right, now we're going to go up three frames, one, two, three, and we're going to set the angle offset to around 360. All right, now we're going to go forward nine frames, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and we're going to set the vortex start to around zero and a Z distance to around one. All right, so now I'm going to highlight all my keyframes and I'm going to apply this graph. You guys can copy down my values if you guys want. All right, now we're going to add a an adjustment layer and add optics. Click on the little checkbox for reverse lens distortion. And we're going to click on this little stopwatch at the beginning of the clip. And we're going to go to the middle of the clip and set it to 150. All right, so now that we've got that, we're going to go to the end of the clip and we're going to set it to zero. And we're going to press U on the keyboard and we're going to highlight the keyframes. And we're going to copy this graph right here. And if you guys do not have this flowchart, you guys can go to the graph editor and just copy this. All right, so right now it looks a little bland. So we're going to add another adjustment layer and we're going to add S underscore shape. All right, now we're going to go to the beginning of the clip and we're going to click on this amplitude and we're going to move it to zero. Now we're going to go to the middle of the clip and set the amplitude to around 3.1. And now we're going to set the frequency to around 8.8. .8. And now we're going to go towards the end of the clip and we're gonna put it at 0.2 ish. So that way there can be a little movement. And now we're gonna press U on the keyboard, highlight all of them and apply this graph. One thing I forgot to do is I forgot to click on the actual duplicated clip and click on mirror edges. Don't forget to do that. All right, once we fix that, we're gonna watch over the clip and I've noticed that you can see the motion tile a little bit. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna keyframe the Z distance on the shake. We're going to press U on the keyboard. We're going to drag the keyframe to the beginning of the clip and we're going to put and we're basically going to zoom in. So we're going to decrease the Z distance up a bit and we're going to put it back to one at the end. Let's see what we have and we're going to easy ease it and put on the graph, but I don't really like it right now. So I'm going to go ahead and space out the keyframes a little bit. All right. So I like this position. So I like, I like, I like these keyframes to be a little farther apart and this last one a little bit closer to the middle one. I think the shake is a little too much. So I think I'm going to go ahead and go to the middle of the shake and I'm going to decrease it a little bit and turn down the frequency. And if you guys do not like that shake, we can play around with the seed and get different looks. All right, so now to spice it up more, we're going to add another adjustment layer and we're going to add S underscore liquor. And we're going to go to the beginning of the clip, set a keyframe at amplitude, put it at zero and go to the middle of the transition and bump it up to around one ish. And now we're going to change the RAND frequency to about 3.4 and we're going to mess around with the wave amp and put it to around 0.8 ish and the wave frequency up a little bit all right so this next step is completely optional i'm going to go ahead and add an adjustment layer in between the flicker and the shake and i'm going to add s underscore psycho stripes now we're going to click on the mask layer and we're going to click on the clip so mine is 12 so i'm going to go ahead and click mask from layer and click on 12. now we're going to set the stripe direction to zero the stripe mag to zero and the source blur to zero. And now we're gonna go to frequency red and we're gonna bump that down to like 0.5 ish. And now we're gonna go down, we're gonna click on mix with source and we're gonna drag this keyframe in the middle of our transition. And we're gonna go to the beginning and we're gonna put that at one. And we're gonna go at the end and put it at one as well. Now we're gonna add deep glow and this should make it a hundred times better. And now after adding deep glow, we're gonna click on the exposure stopwatch, drag the keyframe in the middle and go to the beginning, put it to zero. And at the last keyframe, we're gonna put it to zero as well. All right, so now that we're done with that, we're gonna drag another clip and we're gonna put it towards the middle and we're gonna drag it down and put it at the bottom of every adjustment layer. One thing I forgot to tell you guys was to go back to the S underscore cycle stripes and right next to the mask from layer, the left one, we're gonna go to the right one and we're gonna click on effects and mask and that should cover up some of the things. But yeah, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.